Yes, okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Ray. I'm a senior technical evangelist with OpsCode. Uh, this is my, I don't know, what is this, the seventh OpenStack Summit? Uh, this is my seventh. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about Chef for OpenStack and uh, the ecosystem we've got going on around that. Uh, the first thing I'm here to tell you about is why Chef. Is everybody already familiar with Chef? All right, most of you, good enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you're dealing with Chef, we're, Chef is based on the idea of infrastructure as code. This is the idea that everything you do with your infrastructure, the way you set up your servers, the, the way your hardware is provisioned, the way the applications get deployed, uh, everything that you do, is tracked in source control. Uh, and you version it, you fork it, you make pull requests. Everything in your infrastructure is backed uh, like any other code base. Uh, and the, the reason you want to do this is because if you have that, you can reconstruct your business from source backups and uh, backups of your data and access to new bare metal or a new cloud. You know, that's kind of, kind of important. Uh, but sh the way Chef works is it gives you a declarative interface to your infrastructure. You're saying, this is what I want. You're not saying how you want it. You're not saying apt get install this, this, and this. You just say, hey, I want the Nova compute package. You know, and Chef will go off and happily enforce that policy for you. You're, you're pushing uh, rather than uh, declaring. Uh, Chef is written in Ruby. The recipes that we write are written in Ruby because it's a nice third generation language. It allows you the ability to interact with other libraries, to calculate things dynamically, to do things you do with programming languages, uh, and extend it if necessary. And you get all sorts of great uh, uh, libraries and all that fun stuff. When you write these, these recipes, uh, you put them in a cookbook. Cookbook is just a way of sharing infrastructure. You know, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, it's got you know, the recipes, templates, custom resources, whatever you need. Uh, but these become libraries for your infrastructure um, that you can reuse and you know, version and share on our community site. There are hundreds of, of cookbooks already available on our community site. And uh, the community is very important to OpsCode. You know, it's very important to Chef itself. Uh, Chef has an Apache license, which means you are free to do pretty much whatever you want, just like OpenStack. You know, as long as you're not applying patents, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, because of this, we have over 1,300 individuals who have contributed code to Chef or some of the, the other uh, applications in the Chef ecosystem. We have over 200 uh, corporate contributors, companies like Dell or DreamHost, HP, Rackspace, you know, people on the halls, uh, and over 900 community cookbooks. How, what does this have to do with OpenStack? Um, so we've learned a lot of things uh, in our time in the OpenStack community. You know, there's uh, Chef has been fairly popular. Uh, this is uh, this is because Chef can tie all this infrastructure together automatically. We use search rather than uh, upfront saying how your infrastructure is going to be laid out. When you deploy a new node, it says, "Hey, I'm a new compute node. Where is the API? You know, I'm a new uh, you know, Glance. Where is Swift to, to store my stuff in?" Uh, all these things get tied together automatically. So as you add more infrastructure, it automatically reconfigures itself. How you, when you start to scale up, these recipes will automatically account for those changes, or they can be written you know, to account for different sizes of infrastructure. The components become interchangeable because they're libraries, they're functional building blocks. If you want a different database, well, you just use a different database cookbook. Uh, and this, the, the code is the documentation for your infrastructure. It tells how everything is put together, and since Almost everything is under the Apache license. It's available for you to do whatever you want. So let's take a quick overview of, of what's actually out there for OpenStack. Uh, here's a quick list of some of the companies that are using Chef uh, and we've been working with uh, to some extent or another. You know, um, some of these are customers. Some of them are community members. Uh, I guess they're all community members. And some of them are partners. So why? Uh, what is Chef for OpenStack? It's a project. Uh, about Three summits ago, I got up, gave a similar talk to this, and I talked about the great work that Dell was doing, the great work that Rackspace was doing, and DreamHost, and HP, and none of them were on the same code base. None of them were sharing, none of them really cared to share. I mean, they'd like to share, but that's not, you know, HP's business isn't making sure that Rackspace moves OpenStack uh, effectively. So to reduce fragmentation and encourage collaboration, we said, let's call, let's make a project around this. Let's try to encourage collaboration 
Chef for OpenStack is a project. It's not a product. Opscode is not an OpenStack vendor like you know, Piston or Nebula or, or Rackspace. Um, and everything we do is under the Apache 2 license. We're trying to get people to deploy OpenStack. It's not secret sauce. You know, there's a lot of documentation. Uh, it gets better all the time. And you know, it's, your business's advantage shouldn't be the fact that you can stand up OpenStack. You know, it's what you do with it afterwards. Uh, so what is Chef for OpenStack? It's a code repository for deploying OpenStack. It's pretty straightforward. It's documentation and it's cookbooks. Uh, cookbooks for the current uh, seven major components. Uh, we'll start adding more stuff eventually. And Knife OpenStack. And so we'll talk about Knife OpenStack here in a minute. Uh, there's the wares. We have an IRC channel. Uh, we have a whole bunch of code on GitHub, a whole bunch of forks on GitHub. and. Uh, you know, we have a Google group that is very lightly trafficked and a, and a uh, Twitter handle. Uh, so what is there today? We have a Chef repo. It's currently for Essex. Um, I started working on Fulsome and Grizzly came out and Grizzly's done. So I have pull requests to get Grizzly, so uh, I'll probably backfill Fulsome. Uh, a community member told me he wanted Fulsome because they have customers who are deploying on, on Fulsome, so he will backport the Grizzly stuff to Fulsome. Uh, currently, it's Ubuntu 1204. There are plenty of forks out there that are supporting other operating systems. We'll start pulling those into the mainline uh, version. Uh, it's KVM and LXC. Uh, we'll be happy to add other stuff. It's MySQL. Uh, it's still using Nova Network. Uh, there is a NYSERA plugin that we wrote that uh, works with Quantum on a slightly different code base uh, from AT&T. Uh, it also integrates into Test Kitchen, which is our test framework. So I'll talk about that some more in a little bit. Uh, so tomorrow, you know, Chef for OpenStack, uh, tomorrow, uh, in about two weeks, we have a development sprint scheduled, and we will uh, be working on Grizzly, merging in uh, patches from AT&T, DreamHost, HubSpot, and Rackspace primarily, as well as a lot of other community pull requests. Uh, those repos are all publicly available, so if you want to jump on somebody else's branches or, or forks right now, uh, you can go nuts with it, and we'll be documenting uh, more of that about how these pieces all tie together. Uh, the roadmap, looking ahead. One of the things that uh, we've, we've been really looking at as a, uh, a community of deployers is, is deploying from source. Um, the distros are nice, uh, but they tend to have opinions that conflict with configuration management. If you get a, you know, a package and it creates a bunch of users and turns on a bunch of services and writes a bunch of schema, Maybe that's not how you set up your, your infrastructure. So there will be uh, some threads about building packages from source. And once we start doing that, we'll do continuous integration on it as well. Uh, hypervisors. Uh, one of the forks already has bare metal Nova working for Grizzly. Um, we'll be uh, probably merging that just uh, out of the box. Uh, Hyper-V is a very viable uh, thing to do with Chef because we treat Windows as a first class citizen. We have. Uh, quite a few very large Windows deployments out there. And Hyper-V requires mixing uh, Linux and Windows, and Chef does that very well. Uh, databases, a lot of people like Postgres. We're gonna support Postgres as well. It's pretty much a drop-in thing. Uh, Cinder, uh, Ink Tank has good cookbooks for uh, Ceph already, and we can just drop those in as backends for Cinder. Uh, Quantum, uh, Mitakura has Chef cookbooks for their plugins. Uh, I'm gonna work with them to make sure that they're well supported uh, in this framework as well. Red Hat, Debian, and SUSE. So uh, SUSE has cookbooks available with the Crowbar project uh, for deploying OpenStack. Um, Red Hat cookbooks are available through Rackspace's repo, and Debian has made pull requests into one of, one of the, the branches has, has Debian pull requests as well. So, if you have a favorite distro, it'll get mainlined eventually. Uh, and of course, documentation. All this stuff has to be documented. Uh, as we've heard from some of the other documentation sessions, it's a thankless task, but it needs to be done. Um, and of course, we'll try to support the HA configuration uh, as outlined in the, in the HA guide. So, the ecosystem. That's just kind of the goal of mainline Chef for OpenStack, which is kind of a, a, a lagging indicator of what's going on in the ecosystem. You know, I'm, I'm Chef for OpenStack with like two or three other coworkers, and you know, the ecosystem is, is exploring the, the space. You know, they're, they're doing Grizzly you know, uh, weeks before it comes out. They're doing you know, Red Hat, they're doing SUSE. They're, you know, they're exploring the space, and then we try to merge back in as much of it as we can. Uh, first up, uh, AT&T. I've been working with AT&T a bit. 
Uh, all their cookbooks are online on GitHub. Hopefully you've heard about at and successes. They are running a real production loads in a number of data centers, uh, fully automated infrastructure. They drop uh, Cobbler in, into their infrastructure and deploys all the nodes via Pixie booting. Chef has put on all the boxes. Uh, they're, I think they have 15 data centers uh, with very heterogeneous hardware. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff. All the cookbooks are online um, over in ATT Cloud. Uh, they are the primary source for the Folsom work. Uh, they have uh, very uh, well-documented cookbooks uh, that are in continuous integration and, and released frequently. Uh, they have an OpenStack common library that is providing a lot of the core infrastructure. That'll get merged into the mainline stuff. Uh, they're also the, s the source for Cinder, LVM, uh, NetApp, and RBD. Uh, and lots of other support technology cookbooks because the nice thing about OpenStack, or the bad thing about OpenStack, is it touches so much technology. You know, so many other things besides OpenStack get touched by it, so it has a kind of a halo effect on the cookbooks that it touches. Dell's Crowbar. Uh, so if you haven't heard of Crowbar, it's a hardware provisioning application management platform. It's got Chef embedded inside it. Uh, you know, it uh, exists over on uh, crowbargithub.com. Uh, Dell and Sousa <coughs> are actively engaged in it. A lot of other uh, community people are working on it. Their cookbooks, uh, that it, it uses a lot of the same cookbooks. Patches are going back and forth between some of the other branches. Uh, it is the likely source of Swift. Um, once I actually get around to, to writing, uh, to pulling in Swift cookbooks into you know, the official chef for OpenStack. Uh, DreamHost, all their cookbooks are public. Uh, they ha have been really good about uh, you know, integrating Ceph into what they're doing. Uh, they have Salometer and Quantum uh, cookbooks as well. They're the source of the quantum cookbooks that, that we're using. Uh, NYSERA, uh, we engage with NYSERA to write cookbooks for MVP. Uh, we also uh, have an open vSwitch cookbook in progress, and it is up on GitHub. You know, so if you are currently deploying NYSERA uh, on uh, Folsom, that's available for you. Uh, Rackspace Private Cloud. This was the original source of the Essex cookbooks that uh, we forked off. I'd worked with Rackspace previously, and the cookbooks. We'll be talking about Rackspace's cookbooks in a session on Thursday. So if you're looking at the workshop, we'll be going through uh, Rackspace's cookbooks. Uh, these are all on GitHub. A nice refrain. Um, all open source, and you know, uh, likely they'll be the source of the Red Hat support because they're doing a lot of testing with Red Hat. Uh, you know, Chef is front and center and embedded in their product as well. So the halo effect that Chef for OpenStack has, it touches so many other cookbooks, you know, whether it's Rabbit or you know, MySQL or other things like that. Uh, Test Kitchen is our testing framework for testing infrastructure. If you have a, a cookbook uh, for something, say, like My MySQL, you know, uh, what Test Kitchen will do is you define which platforms you want to test it on, like Ubuntu 10.04, 12.04, Windows, you know, 2008 R3, and uh, it will run VMs for each of the OSs that you specify and whatever tests you have, whether they're unit test, functional test, you know, behavioral test, uh, that's what Test Kitchen does. It has, a knife o it has an OpenStack runner, so you can just specify the OpenStack instances uh, that you want to run with, and so your infrastructure automatically gets tested. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, knife, Rackspace, and HP borrow a lot of code from Knife uh, OpenStack. Um, Hopefully someday we can get those off of separate code bases. Uh, that's a different thread. Uh, Crowbar, Pixie Dust, Razor, these are our bare metal provisioning tools. People use uh, all sorts of different tools to get the hardware up to put Chef on it. All these get a lot of work and a lot of love. And if you're not using OpenStack, you're still probably going to have this problem you need to solve. Uh, Arista EOS. Arista makes uh, s uh, programmable switches. You know, software-defined networking. Uh, the Arista has a chef uh, agent that can run on the actual switches themselves. And people are starting to use this in their OpenStack deployments. So no longer do you have to manually manage your routers and switches. Uh, there are a number of other vendors if you're interested. We can talk about that offline. Uh, Berkshelf, Librarian, Spice Weasel, Spudnik. These are, uh, these are tools in the, uh, in the greater chef community that because of their exposure in the, the OpenStack community, they get a lot more patches just because you know, people are using these to deploy their infrastructure and they're having a bigger effect on, on the greater uh, Chef community. So Knife OpenStack, it's great. We've gone and deployed OpenStack or maybe we have you know, a, a vendor providing OpenStack for us, you know, someone like Piston or Nebula, that they have you know, 
an appliance or something like that that is open stack is deploying OpenStack for you. Or maybe you just have access to an OpenStack cloud that you don't have anything to do with. Uh, Knife OpenStack is, is how you're going to work with it. A knife is the, sh the command line tool for Chef. Uh, it's how we talk to APIs. It's how we talk to our own API, uh, but it's also how we talk to cloud APIs. So what we can do with Knife OpenStack is we can query the, the OpenStack API for things like the flavors, the groups, the images, and the servers that are up on the, on the, uh, up on the OpenStack deployment. Uh, and once we run a, a command like Knife OpenStack flavor list, we can say, hey, these are the flavors that are available to me. Uh, then I'll run Knife OpenStack image list, you know, get the images that are available to me. Uh, and then I can go and say Knife OpenStack server create. I can actually contact the OpenStack API, request that an instance gets spun up, Chef will then SSH into the box, bootstrap it, put the Chef agent on it, and then run whatever infrastructure you want on top of that. So if I need to deploy Hadoop workers, if I need to deploy LAMP stacks, whatever sort of infrastructure you may be running on top of OpenStack, you do it in one shot. You don't have to you know, go click in a UI to deploy a node and then come and run another Chef command to put stuff on it. It's all in one. Knife OpenStack server create shows up in the dashboard. Go and SSH into the box. You know, uh, 30 seconds later, your box is up and ready. Uh, Knife OpenStack has been tested with all of these. Uh, it works with uh, Diablo through Grizzly um, and Trunk. Um, it uses the OpenStack API, so we're not using the EC2 uh, API. If you need to use that, we have Knife, Knife EC2. Um, and then we've done a pretty good job of uh, adding new features to it. It's by far the most complex of, of the open of the uh, cloud plugins, um, because OpenStack supports so many heterogeneous types of environments. You know, whether you have private networks, public networks, multiple networks, name networks. You know, if you're running Windows, if you're running Linux, uh, we're you know on top of all of that, and you can bootstrap Windows nodes uh, as well. Uh, the roadmap for Knife OpenStack, not super exciting. We have a bunch of tickets. Uh, you can go and look at them. You can uh, go and read the documentation. Uh, next thing that'll probably drop in the next month is managing floating IPs and networks on Quantum. So you'll be able to create and destroy networks. And when you boot up a VM, you'll be able to say, hey, I've got seven networks. I want to connect to these three. Yeah. That's, that's the short-term roadmap. Um, probably in time, we'll add support for more OpenStack features. It's kind of a question of what do you want to support? What do you want to have Chef do as opposed to what do you want to do uh, through the, the OpenStack dashboard? You know, how often are you actually going to create new X? You know, whether it's networks, volumes, whatever. Things that you do a lot, we're going to automate. So yeah, that's great. I can talk to OpenStack. Why would I move stuff to the cloud? You know, we actually do want to do work. OpenStack is not just you know, OpenStack for the sake of OpenStack. Um, you know, the promise of the cloud is things like inf instant infrastructure, unlimited capacity, auto scaling, no commitment. That's really important. And immediate replacement. If something's wrong with a node, kill it. You know, replace it. Uh, that's the beauty of, uh, of infrastructure as code is you know exactly everything that's on that node. If it's having a problem, get rid of it. So why OpenStack? It's real open source. Anyone can play. You know, it's real open source because if you might not have noticed, there are like 2,500 people out there and everyone has a different solution and they're all exploring different parts of the ecosystem. That's a good thing. It's a little messy at times, but it gives you a choice. It gives you real choice in the features that you want in your cloud. You know, um, the features are either achieving parity or way accelerating anything else that's out there. That's what's nice about OpenStack. And what's important is when you start dealing with different cloud vendors, you know, I'm not talking specifically about OpenStack here, but most of them have something that's going to tie you to them. You know, you're going to have a hard time getting your company off of you know, vendor X because all your data is there, or you're locked into their proprietary tools. So w when you start thinking about this, you need to understand, maybe I don't want to use all the you know, fancy widgets that they have if, it's, if someday I want to get off of their cloud. But if you're using an OpenStack cloud, chances are good that there's feature parity across different OpenStack deployments. So Chef is good for infrastructure portability. We have plugins for, uh, I believe current count is 36 clouds. Um, that's most of them. Uh, and, and you know, not all of them are, are equally supported. Uh, but chances are good that 
you're going to be moving your company, your developers are going to be working between different you know, hypervisors or different uh, desktop solutions. You know, whether you're on Vagrant or VMware, maybe you're using CloudStack, maybe you're using Eucalyptus, bare metal. Your infrastructure is going to go between you know, desktop to data center to the cloud. You know, hey, we're going you know, from one way to the other, but really, stuff's going every way. Uh, and it's going to go back and forth. Uh, and the reason this is important is you want to treat it all the same. You don't want to have to care that OpenStack only does this, Rackspace only does that, uh, you know, EC2 only does this. You want to you know, generalize across all of it so you can deploy your application wherever you want. And so what you really want to do is get on the, the path to full automation, full infrastructure automation. Over on the left is the basics of configuration management, you know, common automation tasks, a little bit of scripting, making sure you understand how your machines are set up. That's the table stakes for configuration management. Everything should be doing that. Um, when you start getting into version control, uh, actual, you know, uh, and, and once you have you know, your operating system and the applications, uh, the basic uh, services managed, you're going to want to start deploying applications on top of it. So now your developers are in the same tool chain. You know, there's no reason your developers and your operators should be using different tools. Uh, once you have your developers using it, they're already using continuous integration. You know, they've been using cruise control for like decades, uh, maybe a decade. But uh, once you get to that, you want to move to continuous deployment. You don't want to just have you know, developers drop the code on and it works. You want to be able to redeploy everything from soup to nuts, from bare metal to the cloud. Uh, and you want to get to the point of full infrastructure automation. Um, this is a continuous deployment workflow. Uh, this is kind of like how OpenStack works. You know, code goes in on the left, it goes through some testing, it goes into Garrett, it gets reviewed, it gets accepted, it gets tested some more, gets promoted into mainline, it gets you know, promoted into staging, validated each step, and then it shows up in trunk. Uh, that's one form of continuous deployment. Uh, but really, this is what you want your business to look like. You want your business to, developer has a new feature, you want to get it to market as fast as possible. You don't want to have to wait for a change window for in, for, from your developers. You want to have a clear documented workflow for new features to go in and source and show up on the web or you know, I inside your infrastructure. And so what we've been building for a number of customers is a continuous deployment tool chain, a single ubiquitous process for building your infrastructure. Starting at bare metal, uh, you know, we're not we're fairly agnostic about what you use to provision your hardware. Um, and then you're going to manage the entire technology tool chain uh, with Chef. Uh, hopefully you're using Git. Subversion works great. Mercurial's good. Uh, Garrett works really well for code reviews. It's what OpenStack uses. Um, and then you know, a tool like Jenkins or perhaps you know, any, uh, any other uh, tool, most of them can use Chef. And so once you have built your workflow, you have standardized tooling for your developers to your operations and features get out fast. And OpenStack can be used for your private cloud, it can be used for your public cloud, it can be used both ends with some virtualization in the middle, it doesn't matter. It's all seamless and that's where you really want to get to. You want to do real work with OpenStack. So, Chef for OpenStack, too long, I didn't listen. It's a project, not a product. Uh, it's an ecosystem of people doing work uh, there are lots of contributors with real deployments and a wide variety of, of ecosystems. Uh, Essex is working. Folsom works in a lot of branches. Grizzly works in a lot of branches. Uh, Grizzly will be coming to mainline. Uh, Folsom will probably get backported. And the features that show up are driven by demand. So if there's something you want, uh, send patches and it'll show up. Um, but really the point is we want to do real work with OpenStack. So uh, that is, wow, I blew through those slides fast. <laughs> uh, so, any questions? Yes? What is your actual update uh, for public web? Do you find most of it on top of web sites? Is it still making recommendations for people to get to build? <clears throat> uh, is that on the wiki? Yeah. We're in the process of, of pulling everything on the wiki. Um, I'll publish these slides, and there was a link to my stuff and OpsCode's source repos. Uh, it's all in there. Okay. Um, and probably in about you know, three weeks we'll have, uh, I'll make sure that cactus page goes away. I thought it was gone, but apparently it came back. I, just, I see different versions of, of the source books all over the place. Right. It, 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 the, the canonical site will become uh, docs, opscode.com. Okay. Okay. Right. Any, we'll go back to your research. Any, 
Which one? Okay, uh, that is a totally loaded question that uh, <laughs> uh, I get asked every time I give a talk. Um, Chef and Puppet have different uh, ideas about how your infrastructure works. Uh, Chef has a very strong model that, you know, this is, they have a DSL for modeling your infrastructure, and, you know, they say, you know, this, this represents how things are going to work. Um, Chef uh, is based on the idea that, um, it's more, more like code. I think uh, Dan Bodie from Puppet, uh, he and I gave a talk last summit, and that was the last question. And Dan said, you know, Puppet is, th is about a model, Chef is about uh, programming, is about source. Um, so we treat your infrastructure as source code, uh, where, you know, so do they, but they're trying to make you fit into a model of how the infrastructure works. They do this with the DSL. Um, we try to be a little more flexible. Sorry, I'm a little... <laughs> um, I think our approach is a little more flexible because uh, chances are good something is going to not fit in that model. You're going to need to call uh, an API. You're going to need to calculate something dynamically. Um, you're going to need to, uh, you know, uh, search. You know, that was that used to be a distinguishing feature. I think they recently added that. Uh, you know, so we can tie things together automatically just by asking the Chef server, "Where is everything?" Uh, Puppet has a very strong centralized server that is going to calculate your dependency tool, your dependency graph for you, and send that down the wire. Um, Chef is decentralized. This, the central, decentralized. The central server uh, is a search <laughs> engine. It's a search engine. So when a node configures itself, it pushes data up to the, the 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 server and says, "Here's everything about me." And so when the next node comes along and says, "Hey, I need to find the uh, the Nova API," it says. Chef server, where's the Nova API? And uh, as opposed to, in advance, I say, you're going to talk to this Nova API, let me calculate that for you. The reason this is important is when you start to have large deployments, like an OpenStack deployment could be, um, you might need to, uh, as, the, as you start to scale up that number, anecdotally, I've heard 500 nodes is about where a, central, where a single puppet master maxes out. Uh, we had somebody do 10,000 with a single box, uh, with their open source chef. Um, and Facebook's a customer, so I can tell you 10,000 is not the highest number. Uh, that's quick. We can talk over drinks or something, but I can you know dive into it all day long if you want. <laughs> you know, there's a uh, there's a, a very viable ecosystem around both products. Yeah. Yes. Um. So that, that's something that we don't, we don't feel that, most people who are deploying hardware have already chosen a, a bare metal deployer. Um, I could name 10 for you right now. Uh, and for us to try to impose one, <laughs> I had like five of them in my slides already. So I mean, for us to try to impose a choice in advance for you seems a little presumptuous. Because at the end, you're gonna get your hardware provision and Chef is gonna be on it, and that is a, nasty, sticky problem of provisioning hardware. So if you like XCAT, if you like you know, Crowbar, if you like Razor, we're going to just try to support all of them well. Um, and the various large public deployments that are out there, each one of them has something different. You know, HP has something, DreamHost has something, Dell has Crowbar, Rackspace has Razor, uh, AT&T has Cobbler, I have Pixie Dust, um, you know, uh, what am I up to? Seven. Yeah. IBM has XCAT. Uh, those are all OpenStack deployments with Chef. So for us to choose one, probably not going to happen. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have when it goes up to the port into the ecosystem, then Nova. Is that moved from your repo? I, I wasn't aware of that. Is that right now? Uh, the Essex ones have been up there for a while. Uh, like the the, grizzly, the grizzly stuff is in my repos. Yeah. It'll, it'll get promoted in about three weeks after it's docked. And is that, uh, the Grizzly stuff you were doing, is that bringing in some of the AT&T stuff? Uh, Where's that coming from? Basically okay. it comes down to, are you using uh, OpenStack Common, or are you using... OpenStack Common. Okay. 
I, we, at the end of the Grizzly Sprint, <laughs> we will be on OpenStack Common. No, 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 this is... Everybody's probably not worried about it, but is that including the, uh, so that the RTD hook fork and then at least the use open stack common, or did you get rid of all of the... Um, so, okay, quick genealogy here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> everyone came together at Essex. Yeah. Uh, AT&T forked off of Rackspace, and I forked off of Rackspace. I forked off of Rackspace. You forked off of Rackspace. <laughs> um, <laughs> IBM forked off of Rackspace. Uh, and uh, AT&T rewrote some of the core libraries, uh, and it's called OpenStack Common as opposed to OSOPS Utils. Uh, the order, and so I am going to switch to that. Uh, the order of the merge integration is going to be um, a employee of HubSpot uh, named Craig Tracy has moved everything to Grizzly. He took the Essex stuff, moved it to Grizzly. And it works, bare metal, Nova, that's what he's doing with it. I'm gonna move to that. Then I'm going to pull the AT&T stuff in on top of that. Then I'm going to pull the DreamHost uh, quantum stuff in. And then I'm going to compare it against Rackspace to see if there's anything we're missing. And then, <laughs> and then I'm going to backport it on Folsom. Yes, and then he's going to backport it on Folsom and make sure Mita Kerr is well supported. Yes, so Matt, uh, can I be talked later? Because I'm totally doing that. Absolutely, yes. Uh, if, should we have a whiteboard? Should I sign up for one of the un-sessions? OK. I'll try to find. Is Fletcher here? I'm doing the Razor talk too. Yeah, that's Thursday, 320. Uh, I'm doing that with Rackspace, so cool. it's their cookbooks. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm giving this talk on top of someone else's cookbooks. I, I, I worked on those too. It's so. a rich community. That's the, the beauty of it. Um, yes? Uh, how do you do the intersection with uh, heat? With heat. So what's interesting about heat is it started as a uh, and, and this is my biased view, um, as kind of a, a clone of, of CloudFormation, of AWS CloudFormation. Um, and I didn't find CloudFormation particularly interesting, you know, because people who are using Chef are usually a little more past that. You know, it's simply like a script to stand up a node. And we're, you know, I, I like to think we're past that. Um, so I didn't pay a lot of attention to what he was doing. Um, and then Amazon released OpsWorks, which is based on Chef. They're very public about, you know, Amazon OpsWorks is using Chef. They trumpeted the fact that it had compatibility with, you know, the, open, the, uh, the Ops Code Chef community, even though they're two releases back. Um, so we're working with them to get them up to date. That muddies the waters a little bit around heat, uh, because heat has also taken off tr dramatically, and I need to pay more attention to what's going on there, because folks like uh, Rackspace and IBM are both involved in heat a lot. They're also both huge chef shops, so I need to I need to follow up more on heat. I don't have a well-formed opinion, um, but I'll be attending a couple of the heat sessions. Yes? Yes. Yeah. You have a question? Right. Um, chances are good you're going to disagree with something that is in the, 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 the packages provided by the distro. Um, and you're at the whim of the distro to update those packages for you. Um, it's not that we're uh, you know, antagonistic with, uh, with the distros. It's just that uh, what we found is people have opinions that differ from the distros, and they end up writing cookbooks that undo those you know, in the recipes, they're actually undoing the behavior. They're deleting users and changing the schema and, and dropping tables. And so what we'd rather have is just vanilla packages that put the, the you know, the actual artifact, you know, the actual, you know, binaries and, and libraries and stuff on the file system, and we'll go from there. Um, we'll see how well that progresses. You know, we'll keep supporting the, the distro packages as well. But once we have that model in place, we're also not tied to the distro's release schedules. So we don't have to wait for you know, anybody to update a certain package, what if I want to build off of some Git branch somewhere because I backported a vendor branch, you know, a vendor patch into my tree? I can do that. And so that's kind of the flexibility uh, that, you know, our user base has been asking for. You know, we're not, um, my goal is, you know, kind of what's funny is, is my goal is to support, you know, 
the guy who wants to set up OpenStack in their lab. You know, it's like, hey, we got an OpenStack cluster, boom, it's up. That's kind of what I want to support because that's most, I mean, that's a lot of, that's most users, but the people who are doing a lot of the day-to-day -day work are people who are deploying real large deployments of OpenStack who have very, you know, hey, they want to run trunk. You know, they want to run, yeah, they, they, have, they have their own patches. You know, they have stuff that, it hasn't merged upstream yet, but it will. So they're building off of all sorts of different branches and forks all the time. Chef can support that use case, so I have to support kind of both at the same time, you know, which is why I'm always behind everybody. <laughs> so any, I saw some hands and, yes. Um, so uh, the the process that Opscode has uh, is we since we're an Apache license project we do require CLA. So you know I listed it off of you know 100, 1,300 companies of people who who've done the CLA, 200 some companies. After that, <laughs> uh, after that, uh, that's where it gets kind of nebulous and hand wavy because there are a bunch of outstanding pull requests that haven't gotten merged quickly. Um, we're trying to get more uh, engineering behind it. Uh, we're building up a continuous deployment, uh, a continuous integration tool chain around our knife plugins. Um, and then once we have all the, all the different cloud plugins working, well, we're gonna need to do the same thing with OpenStack. So we will build up a continuous uh, integration uh, framework for OpenStack. And then when people start saying, well, I needed to support this and this and this, I'll go to Fry's, buy some more hardware and, you know, I'll have a line of, you know, this is the SUSE chain and this is this, and, you know, my office will be really hot. But um, we're working towards better engineering around it. I, you know, right now it's, you know, I, in my head, I know all the, the pull requests that are out there, and I've got like 40 tabs open that I need to merge, and we need to have better engineering around it. I just, that's all I can really do is, is you know, be public about the fact that we're, we're slow uh, because it's like me and a half, you know, a person. But everyone else seems to move fast. So, anyone else? Uh, I'll be here all week. So, if uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to look me up. Uh, Matt at Opscode. Um, thanks a lot.